And here we are live in uh, Art Battle, Vancouver. A very special show tonight. Your host will be uh, Art Battle co-founder Chris Pemberton. Hey, Chris, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. Can't wait for tonight's show. Always enjoy Art Battle, Vancouver. It's been going on for ten over 10 years now, so uh, uh, this is one of our flagship Art Battles. An absolute top-notch event. A lot of the best artists come from here. I'm going to turn on uh, venue audio and see if we can hear some good action from the venue. Wild card shield chosen. Great. Chosen. In our little, before we start, I need to do the The venue audio is hard to hear and harder for us in the chat. Um, one of the things that we can do is load it directly from the old M3 U8 links, which I'm going to do right now. Uh, but so far, it's um, just a chilling situation over there. Lindsay is giving us a bit of notice in this way. Um, so here we go, checking out these DJs. All right, I think the MC is getting on the microphone right now. One thing. 
Walk <laughs> around in a circle. I know it sounds easy, but let me tell you, you are not going to get annoyed about me telling you to walk in a circle over and over and over again. <laughs> so in a tornado-like fashion, you want to walk around in a circle, and I promise you your Instagram stories, your TikTok, Twitter, whatever people are doing these days will look much better. <laughs> so, we all know how it works. Now how we vote is the text message you would have received when you entered the building is how you vote and is how you uh, bid for the painting that you would like to take home. Because I'm sure there are some people who definitely want to take some paintings home today. All right, so before we get started and introduce our amazing painters, we are going to draw a wild card. So if you put your name in the wild card bucket, this is your time to shine. Okay. Okay, drum roll, please. And the wild card is... Oh, oh that one's a blank one. Just kidding. Next one. <laughs> Nicole Frida, Frida? <laughs> Nicole Frida Lee, friendly, yeah, Nicole! Woo! So you'll be in round two, so when we call for round two painters, we'll bring you back so you should get your power ready. <laughs> All right, so uh, when round one is painting, you will then vote for your favorite painting, and then the winners of round one and round two will be the round three for our finale. All right, are we ready to get started?
All right, Chris, all yours. Okay, great. Here we go. The first round of Art Battle Vancouver. It is April 23rd, 2022. Can't believe we're that far into the future, but the future looks bright with these great artists at the canvas here tonight. Uh, we are at easel number one right now with Danica Nord. Of course, all of these artists will have different ways to uh, approach the canvas and start their paintings. And one of the very interesting uh, things about Art Battle is seeing how much work the artist gets done in the first couple minutes. Do they have a really clear idea what they're going to do? Uh, are they kind of more playing it by ear? It's different artist to artist. And... Uh, um, we're here now at easel number two with Dara Nucci, and uh, you can see that uh, she's getting some pretty good coverage with a, uh, uh, a wide brush there. And we are uh, slowly moving around to Maca Paleo. Uh, Maca Paleo uh, painted for the first time in February of this year. This is her uh, second event, and uh, she is from uh, Mexico, actually, <clears throat> transplanted to Vancouver, where she makes her home now. And uh, you can see she's starting off quite bold. She's got uh, a lot of coverage so far on the canvas and is uh, sort of uh, marking out some large division lines. A lot of contrast going on so far with the uh, sort of the turquoise in the background and the red. Uh, going to be very interesting to see what she does. She's uh, uh, painting very quickly, getting a lot of coverage, uh, and it can be quite hard to, uh, to paint wet on wet. If you cover all your canvas in the first minute with paint, if you get too much on there, you can end up sort of in trouble with uh, trying to get your uh, fine detail brush strokes in there. But... <clears throat> We will see as we come back to uh, uh, Maka what she's done here. Uh, we are at uh, Easel 4 now with Shanice McIntyre. Uh, Shanice also has a lot of coverage. She is working in the uh, landscape uh, style here. She has tilted her canvas 90 degrees uh, from the way that it's set up on the easel into the landscape mode. And will be very interesting to see what she does because, indeed, this is Shanice's first battle. That she is a pop art painter and detailed tattooist and has mastered a wide variety of styles and materials. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see. We're, we're told that she has a pop art with colorful, unrealistic outcomes. Um, here we are at Easel 5 with Raman Jot Singh. And uh, this is also his first battle. Uh, so it's going to be very interesting to see uh, what he does. He's got a, a sort of a different approach, doesn't have the all-over coverage that the other painters have, uh, sort of uh, right into his composition. Uh, now we are at uh, Easel 6 with Felipe Carten, uh, also in his first battle. A lot of first-time painters here tonight, uh, which is always uh, very exciting. We'd love to have new artists in the art battle community. Um, we're always looking for artists, so if you're watching and you're thinking that uh, this is something you'd like to try, please drop us a line at artbattle.com slash artists. Uh, we are always looking for uh, new uh, talented painters, uh, courageous painters, to take the stage at Art Battle. And we have monthly events, so there's uh, uh, a lot of opportunity. Now we're back to round to easel number one. I believe this is uh, Danica Nord. And uh, Danica is looks like she is painting a bird of prey. Uh, it looks like she's got uh, the beak in there and some. Uh, she's working on some eyes, sort of a close up of the head of a bird. Uh, be very interesting. We're only a couple minutes in here, so there's a lot of uh, time to go, and she's got a uh, uh, lot of detail to to finish off, a lot of space to uh, finish off her painting here. But she's working with a uh, wider brush. We often see painters start with a wider brush uh, to get uh, a more a fat, quicker, uh, large coverage on the canvas and then scale down to a smaller brushes as we go through in order to do the detail work. So uh, very interesting to watch them work. One of the benefits of being there in person is you can 
study the implements that the artist got. We're getting a view now of the uh, palette of uh, Derenushi. Uh, we're seeing the palette is, uh, it looks quite muddy already, actually. I hope that she's able to uh, pull out her specific colors in there. But she's got, uh, hard to tell what this is. Could be a uh, fish. Um, very interesting to see how this evolves. Uh, but uh, a lot of coverage on the outside of the canvas in the blue and has uh, left some white space with these orange lines in the middle. Now she's doing the very challenging task of painting wet on wet. She's trying to get an outline on her figure there and uh, looks like it's having a little bit of a challenge. Um, we're now at easel number three with Maka. And uh, Maka has started with a lot of coverage, very vibrant. Looks like uh, maybe a figure coming in here. Looks like we're maybe going to see an abstracted uh, figure piece, uh, which is not unusual for Art Battle. We do see that uh, uh, quite often. Uh, a lot of artists uh, like to uh, straddle the two realms of figurative painting and abstract painting. And so... Um, we love we love to see their different interpretations on that. Uh, Maka working on the eye in the center, just getting some fine detail work in there. Uh, it's becoming very clear. She's working on the pupil and uh, just on the outlines of the eye, maybe the lashes. Uh, looks looks quite good. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what she does with the uh, outside space there, as it is. Uh, currently quite abstract and um, a, a lot of contrast. So uh, that'll be very interesting. We're here with uh, Shanice. Again, Shanice is in her uh, first battle and uh, is doing quite well so far. Painting some pink flowers on a uh, light blue background. Um, hard, hard to see the exact detail. Her shadow is falling across the canvas, but Again, as we said when we came around the first time, she's working in the uh, landscape style uh, here. So she's got a lot of room, a lot of uh, broad room to work. She's doing these flowers, but it'll be interesting to see if she brings another element in here. Uh, maybe um, other aspects of the garden, or if she is just goes with these uh, pink flowers. But uh, definitely looking really nice. She's been able to get uh the pink in there without getting the, the mud from the back um and so that's uh looking very good we're here with mr singh ramanjot singh uh, in his first battle the, his intro says this intuitive artist lets the process guide their drawing painting and photography practices so uh he is uh, we got the idea that he is working from um, just more on the fly here from that description that he is uh, sort of making this up as he goes. He has a a, uh, a landscape going with sort of a whimsical multicolored river coming down from it. Uh, and now he is uh, attempting to paint wet on wet in that blue area. And we'll see how that uh, turns out when we get all the way around the easels. Um, we're here with uh, Felipe Carten, who is doing a um, sort of another abstracted portraiture here. We can see that he's got a, a face uh, sort of sketched in, in the white space that he's left, and he is working on these uh, uh, very colorful, very textured uh, areas. So the majority of the canvas now uh, will be very interesting to see how this evolved, if he spends the last uh, 10 minutes uh, working on the highlights in the portrait area, uh, does he get this background completely finished before then? Um, be interesting to see as we go around how he's doing. He's sort of oranges, oranges and purples there. Uh, so we have some more color. Now we're back with, at the beginning, I should say easel number one, and easel number one is Danica, 
and she has added a she put in a full black background since we were at this spot uh we've gone all the way around the easels and there's been a lot of change in her painting she is uh definitely got is definitely a, a bird there I, I don't recognize what kind of uh uh, bird it is but i'm not a uh i'm not a bird expert by any means but she has got a, a bunch of uh, red feathers and a black background it's quite striking right now actually i do like this piece i feel like it is going to be a contender in this round uh she's just right now working on the center of the eye uh do birds have pupils i guess they do and she is Working on one there, you can see that the stare coming from this bird is quite clear now. And as she moves over to the left eye and puts it in, um, suddenly the bird has a different expression. Uh, that's one thing that the eyes do. The eyes are, as they, they call them, the window to the soul. And certainly in a painting, the way that the eyes are done can... Uh, can completely change the narrative and you see that bird take on a different life as she's done that. Here we are with, um, I think we've gone all the way over to, uh, this is not Maka, this is uh, Derenushi. And a very interesting piece. This is almost a sort of a Alice in Wonderland uh, caterpillar here. Um, she put a face in there. And it really brought this to life. And she's working on the um, the under area on the bottom of the figure here, trying to set a foundation for her composition. Uh, and she is working uh, wet on wet, so she looks like she's having a little difficulty getting clear colors, but we will see as she uh, goes through. Uh, now we are back with... Uh, this is, this is Maka. Paleo and got sort of a, um, a street feel now to this piece. I didn't see that coming. She's uh, sketched words in there and has done a little crown uh, basquiat style over top of the eye. That is a symbol that um, we see uh, in quite a lot of uh, art battle paintings. We see that little crown pop in there. It's just goes to show you the um, super, super high influence that uh, Basquiat and all the um, uh, movies and stories and everything that we've seen uh, from him has influenced our uh, modern painters so much uh, that uh, we see it pop up uh, as an homage in uh, many paintings. We saw one uh, last night in Chicago. Uh, and uh, it's not uncommon to see that. So uh, very interesting to study the um, the lines of progression uh, through art, through the way that artists work uh, in uh, in respect to uh, what their influences are and who they want to be like or who they sort of see themselves as. Um, and very interesting. I think everybody sees even though he um he died terrifically young everybody sees the career of basquiat as uh something to aspire to so um very interesting we are here with i think this is uh, shanice and uh she is working on these flowers not a lot of progression since we were uh back here at this spot uh around the easels um but um she is she's got some very uh, clear, clean work there, and that's going to go over very well with the audience. Um, here we are with Ramanjot Singh. Uh, again, as we said, uh, from from he is in his uh, first battle, but from what we know about him, he uh, says that he lets the process uh, guide him. So uh, very much here taking the, the temperature of the piece as he's doing it and figuring out what he needs to add. Now he, he changed the sort of what, what, what I thought was a river feature. Maybe it was the, it, it looks now more like a reflection of uh, maybe of the Northern lights 
uh, happening in a body of water underneath this uh, mountain range. Uh, but he has removed almost all the uh, white negative space from his painting. Um, it's and added in uh, a lot of blues in here. Uh, definitely trying to uh, uh, do a water feature. He's got to one swath of white left. It'd be interesting to see if he can uh, resist uh, painting it in or if he's going to go for it. Um, we're back at easel number six with Felipe Cartan. Uh, and he looks like he's finished his supporting background and he is now working on the uh, face. Uh, he has not left himself a lot of room to work on it. I don't know if that was uh, intentional or if the, uh, uh, the, the speed element has uh, caused him to overpaint what uh, he was doing. But he hasn't left, him a lot, hasn't left himself a lot of room to paint the face here. It will be interesting. I hope we can get a little bit closer with the camera to see the details that he's putting in there. Um, again, this is Felipe's first battle. So we have uh, th at least three first-time battlers in this round, uh, which is uh, very cool. Love to see uh, new, uh, new sets of brushes at the easels. Uh, definitely brings a life uh, and uh, uh, excitement to the community. Our battle really is a uh, it really is a community. The format of the event is a competition, but these artists are all very supportive of each other and are uh, very much um, in it to meet new people and network and uh, find out the commonalities and sort of um, find a place in the artistic community. And that's one thing that we are are really proud of is the um, sort of the connective aspect of art battle both through the painters painters in the audience uh, the crew uh sort of everybody comes to uh uh know each other and support each other and that is a really awesome aspect uh of art battle so again if you want to paint at art battle please drop us a line at artbattle.com slash artists uh we would just love to meet new people and uh, see new faces at the easel uh, here we are with Danica. Her bird is looking uh, quite handsome. Uh, the black background really uh, pops out the dimensionality of the face of the bird. Uh, it's it's really come to life here. Uh, it's uh, and now she's just putting some highlights into the eyes, some uh, light reflections, and uh, they look very good. I think that that piece is definitely a contender here in this round. Uh, moving over to Derenushi. Moving over to Derenushi, she has got this really sort of um, almost hallucinogenic uh, worm figure here. We've got the, the, the angle of the head is kind of uh, reminiscent of a a Klimt painting, really, uh, in the way that this, um, uh, I don't know if it's a person or if it's a, a creature, but uh, uh, they're clearly lying down and the perspective is looking down on them from above uh, with the way the head is tilted sort of in the um, uh, classic style. And that is, that is a very interesting piece. I think that it's going to garner uh, a lot of attention. Uh, from the audience when it comes time to vote. And speaking of voting, uh, if you're watching this uh, right now, you can take part in the event and vote. Uh, just go to artbattle.com slash vote. That's artbattle.com slash vote and enter your digits in there and submit them and you will receive a text message uh, which will uh, enable you uh, to vote in this event. You can also bid in the silent auction, uh, and you can take one of these paintings home, or should I say, we will ship it to you uh, wherever you are. Uh, looking at uh, Macapaleo's piece, this one's turned out extremely vibrant. Uh, I thought she was being a little bit loose with her brush strokes in the beginning, but she tied it all in there. Uh, really neat and with some good messaging, too. 
uh, sort of a really a street feel to that piece, uh, which adds a lot of depth to the um, to this round. Um, this is uh, Shanice McIntyre, and I think that time has run out. So there we go. That's twenty minutes, and we are looking at the finished paintings uh, here for round one. So. If this is uh, your time to get in there and vote, go to artbattle.com slash vote. If you haven't already, you can enter in your phone number and you will receive a text message that will enable you to vote in this round and check out the silent auction while you're in there. Uh, these pieces starts at a very affordable price uh, and um, usually you are able to uh, add a piece to your collection or even start a collection. Uh, with an art battle painting at a really great entry price. So I uh, can't uh, suggest that enough. That's a uh, great way to start. And here we are at the end of the round. I think that the uh, venue camera has paused. So we will be back uh, very shortly with round number two. Uh, this is Art Battle Vancouver coming to you live. Uh, we are artbattle.com, Art Battle International, uh, and um, I'll have a little bit more action from the camera. There we go, onto the placeholder screen. So we will be back with the second round in about 10 minutes or so, and we have a wild card in the second round, which is very exciting. A member of the audience is going to get to paint. So uh, join us for that. Uh, don't go away. Maybe you want to get yourself a snack or a beverage. Uh, during the break here, but uh, we have another 20-minute round of painting coming right up.
All right, here we are. We are back with the start of round two in Vancouver. This is Art Battle coming to you live from the Red Room, which is right downtown Vancouver. <laughs> we have been hosting Art Battle Vancouver here for uh, five or six years now, and um, it is just a great uh, venue for live art. Uh, we've got a really good audience here tonight. Uh, checking out all the work and moving around the easels as they watch. Uh, we have six new painters here at the easel. At easel one, we have Jeremy Hendrickson. At easel number two, we have Jean Bosco Bakunzi. At easel number three, we have Valeria Zmack. At easel four, we have Megan Langle. At easel five, we have Jenny Chen. And at easel number six, we have a wild card painter that was uh, picked from the audience. So here we are. I think that uh, we are at easel number two right now. I believe this is Jean. And um, uh, we see, as we see always with our battle, different starts from different uh, people. Uh, and different artists have different processes and ways of starting. Um, we are now at, I think maybe this is Jean Bosco Bakunzi, who is in, uh, his first art battle here tonight. Inspired by nature, this textural painter is known for semi-abstract approach to animal, landscape, and figure painting. So, uh, we are going to see something very interesting. Working very quickly, getting a lot of paint on the canvas with a large palette knife right now, uh, sort of see, as we promised, a, quite a, um, uh, an abstracted landscape. Um, <clears throat> here we are at easel number three with Valeria. Uh, Valeria began battling with Art Battle in April of 2018. Uh, so she has been around uh, for a while and uh, has not um, won an event yet. So uh, you know that that's got to be um, something that she is striving for. Uh, interesting approach to the beginning here. I believe this is a little bit of a um, homage to the Ukraine. She's got the blue over the yellow uh, in the uh, manner of the Ukrainian flag. Not unusual to see some political commentary from our artists. Uh, art and politics uh, go uh, closely together, and art is often a reflection of the world around them. So uh, we see some interesting uh, uh, statements being made, and that one in favor of Ukraine is a very common and very valid statement. So uh, very cool to see that happening. Uh, we are at easel number four with Megan, Megan Lengel. Uh, this is Megan's first battle. We have quite a few first-time uh, battlers here tonight. <clears throat> uh, Megan is a fantasy artist inspired by dreams, uh, which is cool. And we're going to see something um, uh, rather dreamy from her here tonight. She has started off really quickly getting a full coverage on her canvas. Uh, blue, and then she's going in with the orange again. It is difficult to work. Uh, wet on wet in the 20 minute time frame. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how she's able to uh, uh, apply the colors uh, against each other there. Um, here we are at easel five with Jenny Chen. Uh, Jenny uh, first made her appearance in our battle last month, actually. This is her second uh, art battle, and uh, she did a great job last month and was invited back uh, for April. So we can see a, another quick start here. Uh, not much mystery in what she's painting. It's pretty clear. We have a, uh, uh, a nature scene of a, a, a bird and flowers and a sort of a green background. She's got a, a drippy technique uh, going on here, drippy effect on the bottom of the canvas. will be interesting to see if she leaves it that way. Uh, it's often a, uh, an awesome way to uh, use negative space. Uh, in our battle is and with those uh, drips, we can we see that um, often. And since you're allowed to use other materials, you can have like a water bottle or something, and to enhance that. Now we are at 
Easel number six with the wild card painter. So this is a member of the audience who put their name in the hat at the front door to get a chance to paint in the event here. And they did a random draw at the beginning of the night, uh, pulling a name from the hat. And uh, this is a person, I, um, I don't have the name for you right now, my apologies, but uh, we will refer to this painter as the wild card painter and see how they do. Um, often we meet really great artists through the wild card, um, people who are in attendance who didn't register to paint, but have come to watch and put their name in. Uh, we have, um, uh, this year we had a really big success story, uh, in Chicago, a wild card painter, uh, not only won the event, but went on to win the Chicago finals and represented the city at the national championships. Uh, and he just painted again last night. Um, so it's often a, um, can be uh, quite a surprise. That's why it's called the wild card. It's always really wild. Um, we're back here with an easel one with Jeremy Hendrickson. Uh, Jeremy is a three time art battle winner uh, and has uh, been a finalist on another uh, six occasions. So, uh, no uh, stranger to hearing his name called. Uh, Jeremy is uh, uh, has had a lot of success. The last time he won uh, Art Battle was Art Battle 575, uh, which was probably in the um, late, they were probably in um, late or, or probably maybe September of 2017. So uh, it's been four and a half years since he's had a uh, victory. He's been a finalist uh, four times uh, since then, uh, but hasn't won since uh, 2017. But he was a three-time winner. So uh, look out for Jeremy at easel number one. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what he does. Looked like sort of an abstracted skull that he was working on there. Um, we are now at easel number two with, uh, Gene Bakunzi, uh, in his first battle here tonight. Um, semi-abstract, very naturalistic imagery enhanced by moments of abstraction. Recognizable, but stops to make you think. A quote from him is, I use lots of textures created by my palette knife and I enjoy creating movement. Uh, and as we say that, you can see him doing that right now, uh, adding some movement lines in on his landscape, which has been uh, it's very cool. It is clearly a landscape of the Vancouver area. Uh, we can see mountains in the distance and um, some cargo ships uh, in the harbor there. So uh, some inspiration taken directly from his city. Uh, nice to see that we get uh, different flavors uh, in all our art battle cities. We always get uh, painters uh, doing something that uh, reflects uh, the, their surroundings and where they're from in the area. And so uh, nice to see a little uh, picture of Vancouver at the easel here tonight. Uh, here we are at easel number three with Valeria. Valeria, a master of vivid colors and abstract imagery. Uh, so as we can see, there's looks like maybe another piece with, uh, uh, mountains in it. Uh, she is taking back a lot of space right now with a palette knife and some white paint. Uh, interesting to see how she gets that to work. If she mixes in the colors from underneath or if it was able to dry in time, uh, to allow her to. Uh, take that back in a clear manner. Uh, she's got some figures in the field. This piece is uh, uh, sort of abstracted a little bit. Uh, it's really gestural. And um, she's got some large red flowers in the foreground. And again, this is the piece that started off with the blue and yellow that looked a lot like the uh, flag of Ukraine. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how that one evolves. Uh, we are now with uh, Megan, who is in her uh, first art battle, and we saw her working uh, on just an orange line on the blue background when we were here last time. Now she has uh, taken that and put an animal figure. It looks like it is a um, 
maybe it's a it could be a deer uh but it's got a really long tail sort of a maybe a fantastical creature could be a, a donkey um hard to tell uh, exactly but it is uh, very clear on the background here sort of an orangey brown uh, she's putting in some white and black highlights around the outside of the tail area to sort of uh, suggest more of a um uh, body to that creature so uh very interesting in her first battle again so you know that uh, she is feeling the time pressure she's not used to it um maybe she has practiced maybe she's just winging it uh we don't know but uh, again a lot of courage takes to go into your first battle and her heart is definitely racing as it does when you're in this situation uh we're looking at uh, jenny chen's piece here now which is not changed a lot since the last time we were around here at the easels. Uh, she has a, a blue bird on the wing, uh, and it is uh, looks like a hummingbird, and it is um, drinking from a large uh, pink flower, and she is working on the details right now of the bird, trying to bring that uh, body to life. Uh, hard to catch a, capture a hummingbird. Uh, they move so fast that uh, to see the patterns on them is a real challenge. So to paint that idea of uh, motion and uh, and uh, reality uh, is uh, very difficult. But uh, Jenny is giving it a, a good shot here. And you can see that it is sort of a, a garden. She has uh, left the drips that she had going down the bottom, but she has added sort of a Thin yellow line, almost a frame around her piece, uh, which takes this somewhere between uh, a realistic piece and a, and sort of a tapestry uh, idea. Sort of um, looks like it's uh, being uh, framed, and maybe it was done on a loom. Uh, a very interesting piece there. Uh, I don't know if uh, Jenny is going to be a contender in this round. Or not, we'll have to see how these pieces are progressing as we move around the easels. Uh, we're back with our wild card painter, who has uh, sort of looks like a little bit of an exploding watermelon, for lack of a, a better description right now. Uh, she's got a large uh, green uh, shape coming down, sort of like an egg-like shape with a uh, uh, light green spilling out and some red and orange lines jumping out of the top of it. Uh, so interesting as the wildcard painter, usually not expecting to paint. And um, so it will be, uh, it's always interesting to see what they come up with. Uh, we're looking at uh, Jeremy's piece right now, which is a a real close-up of a skull, and he has a little skull sitting on his easel as a reference item, which is uh, very interesting. Of course, references are allowed. Um, you're not allowed to have a reference on your phone. Uh, you can't have a digital reference. You have to have it printed out, but there is nothing that says that you can't bring an object uh, to Art Battle and uh, use that as a reference. So that's what Jeremy has done here. He's got sort of a, uh, a real close-up of the skull, the, the, uh, where the jaw would be uh, is off the bottom of the canvas, and it is on eyes and uh, nasal cavity here with uh, some, a, lot of, a lot of splashing of the paint. It's got some pink coming down the middle, coming over one of the eyes. Um, we do see a skull painted at Art Battle uh, fairly often. It is something that uh, people work on uh, uh, in their studio practice, something that uh, a lot of uh, <clears throat> artists like to do as sort of a, um, a, a skill working piece uh, to do a skull. So we do see quite often. Um, a skull painted, and they're all very different, and Jeremy's is very different. Uh, we're looking at Jean's really excellently done landscape. I really love this piece. 
Uh, he's used a palette knife for the whole thing, uh, but he has got some really excellent detail with figures walking on the uh, uh, the foreground here. Uh, again, as we said when we came around, this is a piece uh, that is a sort of a uh, love letter to Vancouver. Uh, and we can see the uh, the foreground. It looks like the uh, maybe it's Stanley Park, uh, and then across the middle is the uh, waterway with some cargo ships in it. And uh, to the uh, top of the canvas, which would be sort of looking north here in uh, Vancouver, uh, we see uh, mountain ranges with some snow peaks in the background and. He has got such uh, excellent texture in there with his palette knife. Uh, the piece is uh, visually uh, very accurate, and yet at the same time, uh, the paint is uh, very thick and all been done with the palette knife. So a very cool piece from Gene. I think that one's going to be a contender. Uh, we're back here with the Valeria's piece. She has uh, taken it off of the easel to work on it. She is holding it in her left hand as she uses her palette knife to get some uh, texture in the bottom right corner of the piece. Uh, figure looks like a figure maybe of a woman holding a baby uh, standing in the field with uh, bright red poppies and a mountain in the background. Uh, a very nice a uh, colorful piece. Um, she has written 2022 down the side of it, uh, sort of maybe a document. Maybe that's a memory or maybe that's a, uh, a dream. Um, now we are here with uh, Megan. Megan's uh, piece is, again, Megan is the one who uh, said that she works uh, from dreams. Uh, this is a fantasy artist inspired by dreams. So clearly um, her compositions do not have to be completely realistic. They are uh, sort of imaginary and she has this very large uh, animal uh, sort of jumping through the scene and she has a worked on the, she's working on the background, getting some uh, texture and color in there. Uh, maybe that's a full moon behind it. Uh, which would be very uh, dreamlike um, and an interesting piece and her very first art battle piece. So congratulations to Megan for making it to art battle and uh, getting to compete here. Uh, we will see how she does when the votes come in for this round. Um, we are now back with uh, Jenny at easel number five. Uh, this is the piece with the hummingbird and the large uh, pink flowers. Uh, she got a lot of this painting done in the first uh, few minutes and has been uh, uh, working carefully on um, just sort of the lighting of it and trying not to uh, overpaint uh, during the last uh, few minutes of this round. And she's done a pretty good job at not obscuring her, uh, her creation from the first few minutes. Uh, this piece is uh, got some um, colorful movement in it. Uh, it's very cool. So, again, this is Jenny's uh, second battle. So nice to have her uh, back for the second month in a row. She obviously enjoyed her first time a lot. Uh, now we are back with Jeremy and his skull. And... He is working on it. He has it off the easel now. Uh, looks like he's just... Looks almost like he is trying to punch a hole in the canvas with his palette knife. And I, I think that he has... I think that he has actually punched a hole in the canvas with the palette knife. And he is working on getting some sort of uh, crazy. Uh, maybe it's maybe it's a light. Maybe he's trying to get the light in from behind. Uh, but he's got the palette knife sort of wedged into wedged into the eye of the piece. And I think he's going to leave it there. 
And that is the end of the 20 minutes. Oh, very interesting. A little bit of a statement from Jeremy. I'm not sure of the uh, uh, whether it's allowed to leave a palette knife stuck in your painting. Um, it does look uh, kind of cool, um, but uh, usually you're only allowed to put uh, paint and or other um, art mediums onto the uh, canvas. So uh, we'll see if anything is said about that. Uh, we're looking at uh, Gene's finished piece here. I think Jeans is a real contender in this round. He's got he's got such a uh, uh, well done uh, Vancouver landscape here, and a uh, scene that uh, um, really is going to strike home with so many of the voters, as it is uh, uh, such a um, sort of a, a, a typical yet overlooked sort of scene of Vancouver with those cargo ships in the harbor. I have not seen that painting uh, before at our camp. So, uh, and he's done such a great job with the Powell knife, adding so much texture. Uh, anybody would want to hang that in their home. I think it's going to do very well at the silent auction. So now is the time to vote. Uh, please go to artbattle.com slash vote. If you haven't already, you probably did, but just a reminder, Artbattle.com slash vote is the way that you uh, get your vote in here uh, for these paintings at Art Battle of Vancouver. This is the second round. Uh, we are going to see the top two painters from each round go through to the third and final round. So uh, there will be two painters from this round and two painters from the first round who will paint again in the third round. So I like to vote for the painter who makes me want to see them paint a second time so which it's usually that's the the painting that you think is the best uh but sometimes there's like a performance aspect or a uh, uh a way that uh, they have expressed themselves that makes you want to um just see more from them so take your time now to vote we're going to reset for the third and final round and we're going to be right back. It'll be approximately uh, 10 or 15 minutes. So grab yourself a snack and something to drink and uh, get comfortable because we're going to be right back here in Vancouver for the third and final round. Thanks for joining us. We will be right back.
Okay. <clears throat> Here we go with round three. Our painters are being introduced right now. We have from the first round Danica Nort and Maka Paleo. And from the second round, Jean Bosco Bakunzi and Jeremy Hendrickson. So we have two ladies from the first round and two gentlemen from the second round uh, making it through to our four-way final. And we are just about ready to go. I think that they just did the countdown and the painters are starting into action for their second paintings of the night. If you make it through to the final round, you have to do a second painting. Uh, and uh, that is a real challenge. It is hard enough to do one awesome painting in 20 minutes, but to come back and do a second one is a whole other ball game. But these painters are all in it to win it, and uh, that we are going to see four new, very interesting paintings from these artists here in the second round. The canvases are a different size. They're a little bit bigger and they're square. Uh, so we're going to see uh, some different uh, uh, compositions here as the painters adjust to the square canvases. Uh, we were just with uh, Danica and now we are with uh, Maka here who is, and both of them have started off with yellow actually. Uh, which is interesting. We, usually we see um, a start with a uh, uh, a blue or a pink is a more common start uh, than a yellow, but uh, they are um, off and racing here with the uh, yellow tones. Mac has got a two tones of yellow, uh, one around the outside now coming into the middle uh, with a brighter sort of neon yellow and adding some orange brush strokes in there. Maka is uh, very unpredictable uh, what she's going to paint. Uh, we saw a really interesting street style piece from her in the first round, so uh, it'll be very interesting to see. Uh, here we are with uh, Jean Bakunzi, and um, <clears throat> he did a exquisite Vancouver landscape uh, with the palette knife in his first round. Uh, and now he is coming back. He is all palette knife. And uh, he has got uh, something crazy going on here. Unable to tell what it's going to be. Um, he's almost got almost a 3D effect with that uh, dark square sort of jumping off with the uh, bright colors in the background. Uh, so it's going to be very interesting to see what he does. It's going to be a... Uh, completely different painting from the look of it and um and with the time will tell see what his composition is i can't tell what it's going to be at all uh from the beginning here uh not the same story with jeremy you can see that he is doing a face um a uh, a portrait sort of he has already got <clears throat> every color that you can imagine on the canvas and he has uh just sort of uh sketched in the eyes and the nose and the mouth area and now he is working again with a palette knife a lot of palette knives here tonight in vancouver uh it's um not the most common art battle implement i definitely see a lot more uh, brush work but uh, we have our two uh, guys from the second round uh both uh, palette knife users and uh, so you get a lot of texture and a lot of paint on the canvas. And uh, Jeremy, is, he did a skull in the second round. Now here in the third round, he is doing <coughs> a very colorful close-up of a uh, face. And he has got, uh, as I said, every color imaginable on there already. Uh, will be interesting to see what he does uh, in these uh, 20 minutes to bring that to life. Um, here we are with, uh, Danica, who has added a, uh, black background around a, a animal figure that has been yet to be sketched out, but she sort of sketched it out by doing the black outline, uh, right up to the edges. 
looks like it is going to be a, a swan or a goose. Uh, and uh, she's got some blue down there for the water, uh, some green, and a lot of black. Now, she used a black background in her first painting uh, with the large face of the bird, but she put in the face first and then the black background. And in this case, she's working in sort of an opposite way. She's put her background in first, uh, and then she is going to work on the uh, animal, which, as I said, looks like it's going to be uh, a swan or a uh, goose. Uh, and uh, it'll be interesting to see what color she uses uh, for the feathers. She has a sort of a surrealist style, um, and uh, uh, so it'll be interesting to see what she does here. <clears throat> now, this is looking familiar from uh, Maka. She has painted a single eye in the center of the canvas uh, and uh, is working on it uh, out from there. She's got yellow around the outside, and she is trying to uh, put some yellow in over the blue surrounding the eye, but it is the, the colors are mixing on the canvas as it is uh, a, f a fresh brush stroke on top of a fresh brush stroke. Uh, so I'm not sure that she's getting the effect that she's intending. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what she does with that in the 20 minutes if she uh, lets it dry and then cleans it up, or if she just goes with that. Uh, but uh, we saw a little eye in her first painting, uh, and now we're seeing one in her second painting. Yes, no, no doubt it is going to be a similar piece. I wouldn't be surprised to see some uh, text in there. Uh, now we are at the easel with uh, Jean, uh, and Jean is uh, working with the palette knife, as he does, uh, and he is painting what sort of looks like a cityscape now. He painted a, uh, a vibrant landscape in his first attempt, uh, which was successful. And now it looks like he has painted a uh, building, and he's added some windows to it. And he is uh, just going around the uh, outside with the palette knife. Uh, a lot of paint on his canvas right now. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how he brings out uh, detail in that uh, he's um, uh, quite talented at getting small details in with his uh, palette knife, as we saw some uh, little figures on the shore uh, in his last painting, which is hard to believe that he was able to do such uh, fine work with the palette knife. But uh, obviously, he has practiced a lot. And as we always say, these are not really... 20-minute paintings, they're a 10-year and 20-minute paintings as an artist is bringing their whole history of practice and studio work uh, to the easel with them. And so these 20-minute uh, uh, paintings are really the tip of the uh, mountaintop of the amount of uh, work that these painters put in, and we really appreciate uh, them bringing their skills uh, to us here in the live format. Um, I'm not an expert on uh, Vancouver uh, architecture, but that could be the downtown library that he's painting. Uh, sort of looks like it has uh, done in a, um, the downtown Vancouver library, sort of done in an ode to the uh, Roman Colosseum. And his uh, jeans painting sort of has that look to it. Uh, now we are back with uh, Jeremy. Jeremy is working on his very colorful uh, portrait the eyes are halfway down the canvas. The mouth is close to the bottom, and the nose has got a long bridge that goes from the forehead uh, all the way down the face. Uh, and he is spending a lot of time on sort of the, uh, the crown and hair area of the, uh, of the, uh, fig of the face here. Uh, right now, he is working around the eyes. Uh, so far, he's left the eyes blank. Um, it'll be interesting to see if he puts some detail in there. I think that that will uh, really help uh, the sort of the realistic aspect of his portrait if he does. 
um, certainly will add some character, but we know that the whole tone of the face can change uh, just the w with the way that the eyes are put in there. So something that he'll want to do very carefully, and uh, he is waiting, working around the outside. Again, he's got a lot of paint and a lot of color on that canvas. It is quite uh, busy. Um, and in a much a brighter tone than his uh, skull was. Uh, now we are back here with uh, Danica. Danica is painting um, a profile view of a swimming uh, swan, it looks like, and uh, is just working on, or maybe it, it could be a pelican. Uh, <clears throat> hard to tell. Uh, but she is working on the eye, and she has sort of flushed in the outline of the feathers. Uh, but she's got a lot of work to do still. Uh, we're about halfway through this uh, 20 minutes. Um, and um, if she is going to uh, make a piece that is as stunning as her first one, um, she's definitely got uh, some work to do here. Again, Danica is uh, painting in her um well i don't know if this is her second battle but she's been the finalist once before in art battle in april of 2018 she made it to the final but she has not won one yet so it'll be um uh, she's definitely here for the title tonight hoping to make it through the winner of tonight's event goes through to the vancouver city finals uh which will be in june uh, and the uh, Vancouver City Finals winner will move on to the national championship, which is being held in Toronto uh, in July. Uh, so there's a lot at stake here tonight. A spot in the uh, city finals is uh, highly coveted. Uh, it's really the event of the year in all of our uh, satellite cities. Uh, the uh, city finals uh, is, uh, represents... Uh, all the winning painters from the events of the year. And since um, our last season was cut short due to the beginning of the pandemic, there will be winners in there from late 2019 and early 2020 as well. Um, so uh, there's going to be, a, there's going to be a lot of experience and a lot of talent uh, in the show on uh, in June in Vancouver at the city finals. And one of these four painters uh, will make it through. Uh, who's it going to be? Though? Only time will tell as the uh, audience is going to vote uh, at the end of this round for the winner. We're here with Maka. Uh, looks like she's sort of uh, freestyling this piece. Uh, she's got the eye in the center as she did in the first uh, piece that she did. And a lot of uh, busy abstractness going around the outside with some uh, text in there, uh, but it very it very much looks like a uh, a freestyle uh, sort of piece. Uh, I think that uh, Maka is having uh, a lot of fun and feeling the moment and doing her piece in sort of a uh, intuitive fashion. Uh, here we are with Jean Bosco Bakunzi, uh, the uh, the palette knife wonder who did such an amazing. Uh, landscape in the second round uh definitely painting a um sort of a cityscape now it's it's a little bit uh messier than his first piece i he hasn't quite got the um uh the serene beauty that he got in his first piece uh he's uh this is his first battle so uh quite possible that he was not prepared with a second painting uh, as it was his first uh, battle, and he didn't know exactly uh, what to expect, of course. So they know all the, they're told all the rules. They know that uh, there's two rounds and a final, but often in your first battle, you're really worried about your first painting uh, so much that uh, uh, you may not uh, prepare a second painting. And I think maybe that's uh, what's happened to Gene tonight. But uh, It'll be interesting to see how that evolves. We are looking at um, Jeremy's piece now. A lot of the colors he put in in the uh, beginning have sort of been flushed out by these, and now we have a dominance of uh, a dominance of green 
in in the face here. Uh, we see some pink and yellow highlights. Uh, he has put uh, center uh, features in on the eyes, uh, and uh, it's got quite a uh, quite a mean look uh, to this face. He has done some really nice work down around the mouth, though. Uh, it was uh, looked like just a it was just a drippy line uh, earlier on, but he has gone in there and uh, shaped uh, the, done a really good job at shaping the lips, uh, and it looks uh, very uh, a very realistic mouth now on what is otherwise a sort of a, a fantastical uh, face here. Uh, definitely something uh, that you would see sort of a comic book style almost a villain from a comic book uh is what it looks like uh we're just coming back around to uh danica danica is uh working on the facial features of this uh uh swimming bird i think it's probably it looks like a swan uh and she has um she's flushed in the the feathers a little bit on the wing. Uh, I think that um, in comparison to her first piece, uh, the, the feathers are sort of uh, uh, a little bit, uh, they're lacking dimension uh, in the way that her first piece had it. I don't know what the audience is going to think about that. Uh, here we have uh, Maka, who is working on the back of her canvas. She's standing behind her easel, working on the back of her canvas, which is unusual, to say the least. Uh, we do sometimes see painters sign their name on the back, but it appears that she is doing a whole painting on the back of her piece. No, well, the camera has gone back there, and indeed, she is just uh, signing her name on that. Uh, this is a very uh, lyrical piece. Um, it's I having trouble reading exactly what it says. It says humanity live as our one. humanity are one. I think is what it says, and um, uh, very interesting. Again, sort of a street style piece. It looks like Maca might be done before the twenty minutes are up, and uh, it takes a lot of confidence to finish your painting early when you only have uh, 20 minutes uh, to do it. Uh, it does take a lot of confidence to know that you are done, and that is a real veteran move uh, by Maka, and this is Maka's uh, second art battle. Her first one was in February of this year, uh, but uh, she uh, is definitely knows herself uh, and her style very well, and she looks like she has done a brush drop and uh, finished her painting early, uh, which is uh, very interesting and, again, takes a lot of confidence, and indeed, uh, it did look uh, complete. Now, we just had a little glimpse of Jean's piece, sort of a cityscape, uh, and now we're back to uh, Jeremy, who has closed the eyes on his portrait. I didn't see that coming. I think maybe he uh, sort of improvised that uh, because there definitely was some detail in the center of the eye before. But now what he has done is he has painted them shut and had closed the lids on the eyes and it gives a completely different feeling to this piece. This piece no longer looks like a comic book villain. Uh, it looks like some sort of um, um, <clears throat> supernatural female being uh, who is uh, resting, uh, contemplating the uh, universe. Uh, a definitely a more peaceful look to it uh, with the eyes closed. It took it from being a a male character to being a female character, uh, just the way that the um, lids and lashes have been shaped. It uh, definitely looks more feminine than masculine now. It was looking very masculine before, uh, but now it's looking very feminine, and uh, and I think that that is an improvement and a nice job from Jeremy. 
Uh, we're back with uh, Danica, who is uh, working on the uh, wingtip of her swan, uh, just trying to get some life in the feathers there. Uh, again, I don't think that this piece is uh, better than her first piece, which is usually what it takes to win art battle. You have to do uh, the best piece you can, and then in the final round, do an even better piece. And that's the way that you win uh, art battle. It's very hard. Um, that's why uh, we have the competition, because it's not easy, and we like to see uh, these artists uh, reaching their uh, up towards the limit of their potential. Uh, and so, uh, and we do see that on a nightly basis uh, in Art Battle. We're so proud of the uh, uh, work that they put in there and the artists that come out as the champions. You have to really earn it uh, because there are always three other artists uh, going after it. And that is the end of the 20 minutes. There we go. We're looking at Maca's piece. Taking a little tour around. The audience is, uh, there's a good audience here tonight in Vancouver. And they are quite close to the painters and the easel. Uh, this uh, piece is uh, from Gene is quite striking. He, he did manage to get uh, a lot of detail in there. Uh, in the end, he managed to get some figures walking in front of the building and clean up sort of the area to the side and in front of the building and uh, sort of uh, square it off, if you would, uh, and uh, make it a sort of a more of a complete composition. So good work by Gene. Uh, a nice piece by Jeremy. We're looking at that right now. Uh, very colorful, uh, very serene. Uh, definitely took a turn here. He was working with what looked like a very angry face and uh, uh, managed to make it into a, a serene, contemplative, almost a supernatural being. Uh, so great job from Jeremy. There we go. Four final, four good final round paintings. Uh, now is the tough job that the audience is going to have to do uh, they're going to have to decide, uh, each person on their own, who they think should be the art battle champion here tonight, who should go through to the Vancouver finals. There is only one event left between now and the finals. That is May. I think that, uh, I think that it is May 28th is the next art battle of Vancouver. So if you're uh, watching online, maybe, uh, take the opportunity, uh, to go and see it in person. Uh, if you're in the Vancouver area and next month on May 28th, that will be the last chance for painters to qualify for the Vancouver finals. So, you know, that one is going to be, uh, really intense. Uh, now we just have to wait, uh, for the winner to be announced and the votes are coming in here and we're just going to take a short pause and, uh, come back with the announcement of the winner. Uh, it will take about, uh, 10 minutes. Uh, so uh, stick with us here and you can find out who has become the Art Battle Champion tonight uh, by the people, the votes of the people both in the venue and online. Uh, so thank you very much for joining us. My name again is Chris. I am Chris Pemberton. I am uh, one of the co-founders of Art Battle and uh, very proud to be bringing it uh, uh, to life in so many different cities. Um, so anyways, thank you very much for uh, joining us here tonight. Uh, we will announce the winner shortly. We will see when the camera comes back to the venue and find out who is crowned our battle champion. Okay. Stick with us. Bye-bye.
Here we are back at Art Battle Vancouver, and we are just about to hear the winner's name announced. All right, we're here with the MC, and uh, I don't think that we have uh, venue audio, so I'm going to announce the winner right after she does. I think that she's asked the crowd if they're ready to hear who won, and I'm sure they are ready, as are we. Who is going to be the winner here tonight? Will it be Danica, Maka, Jean, or Jeremy? And we have our art battle organizer, Lindsay Meyer, making the announcement right now of the winner. And it is Jean Bosco Bakunzi. Congratulations. The winner of tonight's art battle event is Jean Bosco Bakunzi in his first art battle. Congratulations, Jean, and congratulations to all of our painters tonight for doing such a great job. Our most, our, uh, uh, sincere appreciation to all 12 painters uh, who did such a brave and uh, uh, job of stepping up to the easel in front of a live audience tonight. Uh, thank you very much to them. Uh, and uh, to congratulations to our four finalists who did two paintings tonight, no small feat, uh, and did such a great job. But there can be only one winner, and tonight's winner is Jean Bosco Bakunzi. Uh, this is a really uh, great to have a first-time art battler take the championship, something that you can't predict, uh, but is super cool when it happens. Uh, and Gene will paint in his second event in June when he goes head-to-head -head with other art battle champions in the Vancouver City Finals. Uh, we have had two national champions come out of Vancouver, so uh, really a hotbed for live painting talent uh, and it is uh, going to be an exceptionally talented field uh, painting here in Vancouver in June. So uh, if you're in Vancouver area, please join us in person uh, next month on May 28th for the last qualifying event before uh, finals. I uh, hope to see you there. Uh, if not, you can join us here on our Uh We will be bringing that to you on the live stream. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, don't forget to, uh, to get your last bids in on the silent auction. All these paintings are uh, for auction and uh, they are available at pretty good prices. So hopefully uh, you're able to do that and uh, take one of these home. We will ship it to you. Uh, so no worries about that if you're not local in the Vancouver area. Uh, that's it for me. My name is Chris Pemberton. I'm co-founder of Art Battle. Uh, it's my pleasure to be uh, with you all night here tonight for our Battle of Vancouver. And we will see you soon. Take care. Good night.